Well, I think I'm recording. I'm going to show you how I chop up my... These are actually trims, the slabs. The slabs I do over in this area here, I generally run the sawmill by myself. So the slabs I roll down here, get two and roll them all the way down, let them tip over. And then I can sit there and uh, just chop them up with a chainsaw. But the, the um, trims I put over here and cut them up into little buckets like this bucket down here. I'm trying to work this camera with a tripod on because it doesn't come on and go off very easy. And they end up going in buckets like that. And over here, well, let me see if I can get this camera off so I can show this thing a little bit better. Ah, I'm not too good at this, so bear with me. Alright. This is the machine we got, or made. We built this thing five, six years ago. And here's the little control panel we got for it, the start. And here's the choke, and it tells you all the different things. Here's the thing, a reel. That was a throwaway, come off a old uh, crank thing to put a basketball hoop up. Have an oiler, a little drip oiler put on there to thing. Got a chainsaw, comes down and cuts cuts the slabs that looks looks kind of weird and then it goes up the elevator here's the thing to make the elevator go up or back a little throttle and it goes up and I generally have them drop into a basket sometimes I just drop them back into the back of a pickup truck but you can see they they add up and it takes a while to build them, it takes a while to cut them, but they cut up real good and they dry good and they seem to be pretty marketable. A uh, bucket, uh, uh, I'm trying to think, a milk crate like that, they usually sell for five bucks and a kindling, you sell for kindling, I mean you can, you can do it, do it other ways. This is what the back of the machine looks like, got a little Kohler motor here I bought at a yard sale. Here's a hydraulic tank that somebody gave me. It was off a dump truck. Um, I, I think the bearings probably bought for surplus center. Put it onto there and there's some mechanism there. Um, here's the levers for the saw. I'll work the saw itself. And it comes on back and just goes out into the basket then I can pick them up and put them in the barn when I want. I'll go ahead and try to get a couple shots of it running. First I'll start it up and then show you the whole back mechanism going. Here's where I got some of the trims already set up to go. I'll load some trims. Uh, you might want to turn your volume down because when I turn the motor on it's, it has a little bit of noise to it and I don't know how to get it to be quieter on the thing. back here starting to turn now. I'll turn the dripper on. A little bit faster than it needs to be, but it doesn't matter. There's the chain. Uh, it's running out of fuel. I have to hook up an electric fuel pump to it. It'll catch up. Then they just go up here and Drop into the bucket. There's a chain. Idles will run a little fast so the chain isn't disengaged. And when I have it just right, it'll disengage. I might be just running out of gas. Oh no. I think I ran out of gas. Uh, we might have to do this in two movies then. Oh, I better turn off the key. Have to do this in two movies because I got to go get some gas and I don't know how to edit the two together. Sorry about that. So this will be number one of the chop saw or cut off saw. Another couple things that are real good with it. When I'm cutting, uh, cutting these six by sixes or big timbers like that when I, when I put the saw together years ago. I guess that's been together but I'm working on a new one. You could put, you could put that six by six or six by eight in here and you could just cut it off and it cuts it off. 
straight. It works pretty good. I better turn the oiler off. All right, let me go get some gas and I'll start another movie when I get, get the gas and get it in and get it going.